Hello everyone, welcome to Anime No Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about this second set of leaks that have been released about chapter 1068 of the One Piece manga. But before we dive in, if you're new to the channel or even if you've watched a bunch of our videos, we'd be absolutely honored if you'd leave us a like and even subscribe and maybe leave us a comment letting us know what you thought of the video. It really helps us out and motivates us to make more content. And if you'd like to help out the channel in a bigger way, consider sharing this video or another one of your favorites with a friend. But without further ado, let's get into these latest leaks of chapter 1068. So my friends, before we dive into all the great leaks, please keep in mind that these are still early leaks, even though we've gotten a bit more information since our first video. So please keep in mind that when the official translation comes out, things could be in a slightly different order, or there could even be translation errors from our leaks. But otherwise, let's get in and first start talking about the title. Chapter 1068 is going to be called The Dream of a Genius. And we're going to go a little deeper into each event of the chapter that we discussed in our first leak video. In the cover story of the chapter, we see that Caesar and Judge are still fighting and arguing, and above their heads we can see a balloon with a flashback to their days when they both worked together in the Mads organization. In this flashback, it seems that we're going to see Vegapunk with the same clothes as the photo we saw when Kuma described him and with some of the shadows behind him. Now, it's not yet known if these shadows will be important characters or just supporting characters to fill in the scenario. The chapter opens with Lucci asking Punk Pythagoras about incidents where several Siphopole ships are are disappearing around Egghead Island every time they've been sent to check on things going on at Egghead. Pythagoras, who was already prepared for the upcoming battle, lies to Lucci, saying that they had no involvement with any of these incidences that Lucci said were happening, and he tells CP0 to withdraw from the island immediately. Having no other options at the moment, Lucci orders the CP0 agents to prepare to abandon ship as they had begun their attack on Egghead Island. So the CP0 call in an S-Bear, which is a nickname that they've given to Seraphim Kuma. As the Seraphim Kuma approaches the CP0 agents, he seems to use the power of the pawpaw fruit and transports them all to the island. And it even seems to be equal to the power of the real Kuma. However, it's likely that the Seraphim only possesses the power because of the change in the bloodline factor or lineage factor that Vegapunk may have made to all the Seraphim. Once the Seraphim Kuma teleports everyone to Egghead, the robotic sea beasts that had been previously surrounding CP0 ship begin to attack it, no matter if there was still living beings on the ship. The scene then moves to Kamabaka Island, where the revolutionaries are still stunned by Kuma's sudden attitude of trying to run somewhere that we still don't yet know. And Kuma uses the power of his fruit just like the Seraphim Kuma. This teleports the real Kuma to an as yet unknown location. But like most of us in the community believe, we think it's going to be Egghead, because the current events are completely focused on this island, which could mean that the next chapter, we're going to see Kuma, the real Kuma, helping take on CP0. As as our scene heads back to Egghead Island, we next see Vegapunk revealing to Luffy that his dream was to provide free energy to all people, for the whole world in fact, and this way he could eradicate battles for power and resources. Vegapunk really seems to believe that this would make the world a better place, and it was even possible, because somehow he said he could feel the energy in nature, an energy that he could use to be able to distribute all over the world. But as his research drew ever closer to discovering this new source of energy, his research brought him closer to the mysterious ancient energy that was harnessed during the Void Century, an energy he couldn't learn about, but he needs to. That Void Century energy was even something so powerful and mysterious that the world government didn't want anyone to get a hold of it. This is the reason why they have covered up so many facts and knowledge and other things involving the Void Century. If rediscovered, this source of energy could even make it possible to use that great robot that had attacked the world government so many years ago, something that could be used to cause great destruction of the world government, and it's for this reason that the Gorosei do not accept that anyone ever research this topic. And it is this reason that Dr. Vegapunk wants to leave Egghead, requesting Luffy's help to find a way to get off the island safely, allowing him to finish the research on this mysterious energy that they used to use in the Ancient Kingdom. This on top of the fact that he still wants to learn about the vast technology and knowledge that still exists in this Ancient Kingdom. Now it's unknown if it still exists somewhere somewhere in the vast ocean, or on Laugh Tale, or if it's even been wiped out and erasing its existence. But if that ancient kingdom were to still exist in a totally hidden and unfindable location, there's a very distinct possibility that Vegapunk might go into the realm to learn about it. Vegapunk might even know the name of this ancient kingdom or area. We did see that the archaeologists and researchers on Ohara had managed to obtain the information and the name of the ancient kingdom, so they quite have easily could have written about 
it in their books and even transcribe the name of the ancient kingdom. And it's even possible that this is in one of the books that are located on the island of Elbath, a great treasure trove of knowledge that the world government wants to destroy at all costs. So after Vegapunk asks for Luffy's help to get off the island, Luffy, in his characteristic big smile, accepts his requests and then laughs at Vegapunk's head, saying that he was very funny. Upon hearing that Luffy would help him, Vegapunk is overjoyed and says that he'll pack everything he needs to take to the next laboratory where he would be thinking of moving, but we still don't know exactly where that might be. So Vegapunk tells Luffy to meet him at the lab on the top floor of Egghead Island, and that he was supposed to bring Bonnie to this location. Now, it's probably because Vegapunk wants to give Bonnie something that he had mentioned in previous chapters. Once that's covered, Vegapunk says goodbye to Luffy, and his body instantly melts, leaving Luffy quite impressed with this technology that Vegapunk has. And after that, Luffy decides to do what he was ordered. Getting back to CP0 for a moment, through Seraphim Kuma's power, CP0 is able to make it to Egghead Island. And when stepping on the site, Vegapunk's defense system is activated, and several robots appear and start to fight CP0 agents. However, the agents are no pushover, and they easily manage to destroy the defense of that location. We next see a scene where Nami and her group are watching everything unfold through the monitors where they're together with Shaka. And once Shaka sees this, they realize that these simple robots are not going to be enough to stop CP0. In response, Shaka orders the release of S Snake, S Hawk, and S Shark, as well as Seraphim Kuma has the nickname S Bear, referring to Kuma's large size being that of a bear. These three robots that are released are other Seraphim. As many of you listening in might have already guessed, S Snake is the Seraphim of the Snake Empress Boa Hancock, in which she probably has the same exact power of Hancock's devil fruit, the Maramara no Mi, capable of petrifying anyone who might feel some kind of attraction to her. S Hawk, of course, would be the Seraphim of the greatest swordsman in the world, Dracul Mihawk. And as we saw in his conflict against Teach, Seraphim Mihawk has the same incredible abilities as the real Mihawk. And finally, S Shark would be the Seraphim Jinbei that we saw just a few chapters ago, having many of the similar techniques to Fishman Karate, and even seeming to have a technique of swimming on the ground much similar to Senor Pink's Sui Sui no Mi Fruit. As these Seraphim head out to do battle with CP0, Shaka then hands over control of the Seraphim to Sentamaru. Now, it's still unknown in the leaks if Sentamaru is in fact on the island, and it's possible to see his image in the chapter. However, it's not confirmed if he's actually physically there to help Vegapunk if necessary. Considering the simple fact that Sentamaru is helping Vegapunk rather than being on the side of the world government or the Marines, this means that he has many of the same goals as Vegapunk, desiring to change the world in a way that he can bring equality to all. Heading into the last few pages of the chapter, it's possible to see CP0 causing immense destruction all over Egghead Island, destroying robots and inventions that were preventing them from advancing further into the space. We see Stussy making a comment that she knows every detail about the island, and even says that it brings back memories, which could mean that she has been to this location, even possibly as a child, being maybe a Vegapunk guinea pig, or she was just an egghead to spy on Vegapunk's creations. But because we don't know exactly why Stussy came to that place, it still means that she knows exactly where everything is on the island, even where all the traps might be located. But she doesn't seem to tell the agents where they are. This ends up creating a problem for Kaku, who, although very excited, fell into a leisure trap created by Vegapunk. Now, Stussy just seemed to avoid the traps and then watched her teammates sabotage themselves and fall into the traps, seeming like she's kind of having fun with watching them fall down and get hurt. As the scene changes, we then see Atlas appear in the location where CP0 was, and in rage, she attacks Luchi. Shaka tries to tell her not to take on the CP0 head on. However, she doesn't listen and ends up being taken out by surprise by a very powerful attack that Luchi has. Luchi ends up using the Rokugan technique on Atlas, breaking a part of their head and destroying Atlas completely. Now, though she still remains alive, half her body is completely gone and she's unable to move to continue fighting against the CP0 agents. At the end of the chapter, it's possible to see Luffy carrying Bonnie alongside Chopper and Jinbei, going directly to the top floor of Egghead to meet Dr. Vegapunk. Until... 
they cross paths with Luchi and CP0. Immediately, Luchi and Luffy are completely surprised to find each other again, and Luchi calls Luffy Straw Hat, while Luffy calls him Pigeon Guy, and this is where the chapter ends. So as we wrap up our video, my friends, please remember that these are just leaks and the full chapter will be out very soon, allowing us to get much more information about this and all the other upcoming events in the One Piece manga. But for now, we'd love to know what you think about it. First, how do you think Vegapunk just melted in the island? There have been some ideas floating around the community that Egghead Island might be an actual extension of Vegapunk himself. After all, he has this brain brain fruit, and he has unlimited storage. So is it really impossible that the island itself is part of his storage system? Next, what do you think is going to happen between Luchi and Luffy? Now, a lot of people have thought that this is just going to be a throwaway fight and that there's no way that Luchi could have advanced as far as Luffy has. Because Luffy has, after all, taken on some incredibly powerful opponents since the time skip. But again, we don't know what Luchi's been doing, or even if he's awakened his Zoan Devil Fruit. And although it's a basic Zoan type, that still doesn't mean it isn't a huge power. And finally, what do you think Vegapunk wants to give to Bonnie? Do you think it's a memory from Kuma, or a message, or something else? Let us know what you think about all this in the comments below. So as we bring our video to a close, I'd like to thank all of you so much for watching the video, especially those of you who made it all the way to the very end with us. Be sure you comment on any themes or ideas that you'd like to see in future videos. And also, since you made it this far, give us a like and hit that red subscribe button before you head out to take on the rest of your day. I really hope to see you all in our next video, and let's keep sailing this giant sea together. Take care.